Hello everyone. As I've hopefully conveyed in other videos that I've made, I am really interested in the relationship between art and games. In fact, I, I don't think there's really a differentiation to be made there. I believe all games are art, whether they're successful or not. And I think the question at the forefront of my mind is how can video games evolve from where they are now? Is there more they can do as an art form? Or have they kind of reached the outer limits of what a an interactive game is, do they need to head off in another direction? Is interactive storytelling something that can happen, that it can be uh, the relationship between a computer user and a computer that is a, a different narrative experience than a game? Uh, and to that end, I guess this video is going to be kind of pro probably part of an ongoing mini-series of um, little individual looks at certain departures from conventional video games. I'm going to play Passage, uh, which is an independent game from 2007, made by Jason Rohra. So I only really know of Jason Rohra by reputation as a uh, as an independent game designer of some reputation uh, for treading an artistic path rather than a commercial one and being experimental with game design. So that's kind of all I'm coming into this with. Um, I also don't know much about the game. I know it's, uh, I think, a very short place for a very short time, um, so I expect this to be a fairly short video, and also that it's uh, very philosophical, that's kind of all I've really got going into it. Uh, apart from the, the one other interesting fact, and kind of one of the reasons that I uh, swerved towards this game, uh, rather than some others, is that it's one of the very few video games included in the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York, which, I don't know, I find it very amusing, the, the thought of a, uh, of a serious-minded curator of a major metropolitan art museum trying to puzzle out what is important about video games and uh, and make like a, a refined selection. Um, that really tickles me. Um, but before I, uh, I go off into a reverie about that, I think we should just play the game. I'm going to plunge in. I've installed it but haven't tested it. Um, I just wanted to have the experience fresh and and react to what's going on. I'm not sure what the controls are. Hopefully mouse and keyboard is going to cover everything. Hopefully the game will explain itself as much as it intends to. Um, and I'll sort out audio balance and everything in post-production. So I don't want to keep us any longer. Let's get playing. The best laid plans of mice and non-binary people, eh? So I um, tried to play the game Sight Unseen, uh, but it turns out it's probably not advisable um, with a 14 year old game. You're probably going to have to do a bit of research and a bit of work to get it to get it functioning. Um, so I had to find out some more information about the game to see if this is indeed how it should look and it is. Um, to fiddle around a little with settings to, to get it to present itself. And um, in, the, in doing so I found out that uh, we need to press any key, although I can't find the any key, uh, to begin the game. You can control it with the arrow keys on the keyboard, and then I think you can uh, quit it by pressing escape. So I found out those things. Um, and also part of my experience of the game is that, it, it, this is entirely on me, I have played it through once, and unfortunately I hadn't got my setup uh, correct, so they didn't record the, um, the game audio. So this is kind of a second passage for me, um, which is not what I intended for this video, but interesting that things would have happened that way. So I'm going to start this again with obviously with some some foreknowledge now um, and let's see what kind of experience we have. So uh, we've got this little character and obviously now I can move, move them up and down and left and right and they're on the, um, the left of the screen um, the music has started and there is um, there's another character here who will be and um, I guess you can see one well, my hesitancy uh, to see to ooh, yep they've uh, yeah there's a love connection there. So we've got these two characters, the the blonde one and the the red-headed one, walking through this landscape. So it's kind of a game of navigation. Um, and as you can see on the right, there's kind of this nebulous uh, kind of suggestion of a landscape to come, uh, which. Um, Seems to kind of stretch out and uh, and alter as we as we move towards it, and um, that was kind of one of the things 
I wasn't sure whether this really narrow aspect ratio, um, this kind of tunnel focus, uh, was what I was um, meant to be seeing, and whether the uh, the stuff on the right was a graphical glitch or, or the, indeed the intended experience. And I, I think it is. Uh, I do really like the the lo-fi aesthetic of the game. It's got a a nice kind of chip tune soundtrack that is is pretty melancholy. Um, and obviously uh, the pixel art is, is very charmingly simplistic. Um, so we've been through some kind of wooded area, maybe an interior area, and now we've got this uh, like a tiled floor with uh, with purple obstacles to avoid. So it's kind of got the trappings of a, uh, of a game. It's got navigation, it's got uh, movement controls, and there are obstacles technically, and you're trying to get from left to right, which is a... Uh, and video game staple, especially in the the 2D era. Um, and you notice we have a score as well on the right, which seems to only go up as we move further toward the right. Um, we can, if we can navigate anyway, we can technically go back left, which is interesting. There's no kind of, there's no barrier to that, but I don't think it uh, progresses the game. You'll notice the appearance of our characters changes. I mean they kind of phase in and out. Um, so over... this is interesting because uh, I just kind of noted that we could do this but first time around I didn't try going back to the beginning but I'm kind of interested in it. Ah okay interesting so you'll note that our characters um, appearances are changing even though we're heading backwards and the score isn't increasing. Um, so they do appear to be ageing, their colours have muted. Um, the uh, one who was once blonde uh, is now balding. Um, so you can kind of go back to the, the start here, this foresty area, which is really interesting. And yeah, so even though we've gone back to the start of the game, um, the characters now are quite far to the right of this panel, uh, whereas they started off very close to the left. So that can only be related to the uh, the passage of time um, within this game, which is, is movement based. Oh, there are flowers here. I didn't realize there were flowers here. That's cool. Oh, okay. And now there's that kind of Doppler effect with the landscape on the, le the left and we're quite on the far right now. So I don't, don't know what will happen. So the, the landscape does continue to change the further right you go. And um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, how this is gonna play out really because there's kind of a a natural halting point when you get to the right of the screen which is um, is death so the um, the uh, red-headed originally red-headed character appears to have died and been replaced by a gravestone and then just leaves the original character to carry on um, as the that Doppler effect kind of uh, takes up more and more of the screen so the uh, the sense of the, the past um, takes us up. I don't think, yeah, that effect's not going to decrease. And then that's it. So the, the original character has also passed. And yeah, the score is only 13 there because I did a lot of diving backwards and forwards. But I think I got into the low 40s first time around, which is, is really interesting. So in the interest of completeness, and as this will be a short video anyway, I'll now play you my uh, very first playthrough. So it's missing the game audio only, but it's got the full video and, and my commentary as to what was happening. So I'm moving this character forward. Uh, oh, and down. Interesting. Okay, it's kind of an exploration thing. The... Um, interesting that the character sort of phases in and out. Not, oh, there's a, another person here. Okay, cool. 
Oh, okay. It's a, it's a love match of some kind? Between the, uh, the blonde person and the red-headed person? Okay, some kind of land, abstracted landscape they're moving through towards some kind of nebulous destination. Um, kind of like the uh, the lo-fi aesthetics of it. Um, I guess there's an upper, yeah, that's the upper bound. Interesting. And there's red things. And there's some kind of floor pattern. Are we inside a building? Maybe. It's kind of bricky now, doesn't it? So, oh, what's that? Oh, a star thing. Not sure what that was. Can we go backwards? Is that something we can do? Kind of can. I hadn't really been paying attention to the counter on the right, but that now says 15. I think it started at zero, but I haven't noticed what uh, what prompted that to change. Okay. Well, we kind of know what's on the left, so let's keep going right. Okay, that's just um, the counter up to 16. Okay. I don't know how... Um, it's kind of like a spatial distortion, isn't there? Uh, with the uh, the stuff on the right. And as we seem to be moving forward further, the... Or the... Uh, so the... Okay, the hair colours and costumes of the characters seem to have changed a fair bit. And this parquet flooring uh, is uh, sort of going on endlessly. And there's purple blocks. There's purple constraints. Which is intriguing. Okay, and we do block our way. I think we can go up here. Can we go up here? No, we blocked there. Okay. Hmm. So... Okay, now ray, rays of light and shurikens? That's very strange devices around. Um, not sure what it's all supposed to signify. Okay, has the, the our starting character balded? It looks like it. So the aging process is happening, possibly? The colours are the colours of the characters are dulling for sure. Um, okay, and there's some kind of trilobites around as we go into this purple hall area. Okay, the um, the soundtracks become a lot more limited as well, which is interesting. So there's a definite sense of entropy going on here. Um, as well as kind of a distorted distortion of perspective, I'd say. Interesting. Um, yeah, so our character is definitely grey now. Um, I think our starting character is even bolder than before. Um, we're in a uh, quite a Twin Peaksy kind of environment now. Oh, okay. So there's kind of like a Doppler effect going on with the the screen. So we've passed from where the effect was on the right to where now it's now on the left and the um, there's a greater sense of distortion looking to the left which is presumably the the past um, as we head into perhaps not much that remains of the future we're kind of near these tree shapes again which is kind of it's kind of similar to where we started oh oh no okay one of the characters appears to have just died and been replaced by a tombstone that's very sad. Okay, and then so we've got to 42, um, which is a very Adamsian number to have arrived at. Uh, and then what's our remaining, our poor stooped remaining character going to do? Then nose almost off the, they're almost headed off the screen. Interesting. And the previous kind of coloured, oh no! You've turned into a Tombstone 2. And the screen darkens. Oh, okay. I think that was it. I think that was Passage. So that was my back to front presentation. 
of a very front to back kind of experience. And I think I would call it an experience in preference to calling it a game because it, while it utilises the conventions, the tropes, the language of video games as a means of expression, I don't think it actually intends to be a game. It's making links between those fundamental aspects of video games that it connects with its theme, and I, I think it's talking about human mortality, and alongside that the perception of time and of progress, which are um, at their core fundamental things that go into the conception of a video game. It does feel very intentionally, consciously artistic, in a way that I can easily picture it being in an installation in an art gallery for visitors to interact with. For me, Passage is quite affecting, but it feels like a uh, summative work, as if it's saying these are the bases of video games, these are the bases of life. But it's being so uh, definitive in what it's expressing and how that it can't really be the jumping off point to anything else. It's not, it's not a, a passage to any new development of a type of video game or storytelling experience or, or interactive experiences. Um, it uses what it has to express what it's saying quite powerfully, but that's, that's the end. It could almost be the video game, the statement of video games made as a video game, but for me it's missing the living quality that games are a part of living, they're a living activity. So where do you go from this? You can experience this and you can accept you are a mortal being, your time is limited, but at the moment you're alive, so go out and do something that is enjoyable for you, uh, a living experience. So play one of the thousands, millions of other games out there that you can enjoy, that can be part of your um, experience with life. So you can play Pac-Man, play Street Fighter 2, play whatever you want. They're living experiences and they're not in a gallery somewhere.